Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about why are magnets magnetic. It's going to be fascinating. But by the end of this video, you should be able to answer the following three questions. There are three questions you should be able to answer. The first question is this. If I have these two pieces of metal and they don't stick together, these are just plain old pieces of metal, they don't stick together. Why don't they stick together? Now I have these two pieces of metal. These are kind of like just plain old pieces of metal. There is something special about them, of course. They're painted, so they look like a magnet. But there's something about them. And this is question number two. Why do these two stick together? Besides the fact that they're painted. They, they are magnetic, but why, why do they actually stick together? Or why do they repel? Or why do they stick together? And then the third question, and the most interesting question, is if I take this one, which stuck to the other one, and I take this one, which didn't stick to the other one, and I put them together now, they stick together. Why is that? Now that is fascinating. Okay, and we're going to answer those three questions, and you should be able to answer those three questions by the end of this video. So let's do one thing first and just get one thing out of the way first here. There are only three elements that are magnetic, and those three elements are iron, cobalt, and nickel. And you'll notice that they occur in the same place or the same general place, element 26, 27, and 28 on the periodic table. And it's because of their electron configurations that they're um, magnetic. Those three elements are magnetic. Those are the only three under kind of normal conditions. You can see here I have a piece of copper, not magnetic. You can see here I have a piece of zinc, not magnetic. A lot of people think, oh, metal, it's magnetic. It's not. You can see here I have a piece of aluminum, not magnetic. I have a piece of lead here, not magnetic. I have a piece of iron, magnetic, like that. Now, I don't have any cobalt, but I do have this piece of coin, this piece of coin, this coin, which is a five cent coin from Germany, you can see it looks like it's in copper and it actually is copper on the outside, but it sticks, but the copper is not magnetic. So inside that coin, there's nickel. Okay? In the United States, a US coin, a US penny, it's copper on the outside. And zinc, in Germany, they're copper on the outside and nickel. And a lot of things you have around the house, you think oh, they're metal, they're magnetic because they have iron in them. Like that, that's a washer thing. That's somebody has something like that, we said. And if you have keys, usually your keys are magnetic, but there's only three elements that are magnetic, and that's iron, cobalt, and nickel. And things that are magnetic usually have iron in them. Excuse me. Okay, let's see. Now, when I start out this discussion with my students, I put this diagram or these two diagrams on the board, and I ask my students which of these two are magnetic. One's a magnet and one is not. And you can see, if you look at this one, all of the, these arrows are randomly oriented. And all of these arrows are pointing in the same direction. So they can usually figure out, oh, the one on the bottom is magnetic because all the arrows are pointing in the same direction. Now you'll notice the ones that are all random, they're in these little areas, and we call those areas magnetic domains. And you can think of it as like a little crystal, a little area, a little piece of, the, of this piece of metal. And in this piece of metal, and in all pieces of metal, there are jillions of those magnetic domains. Okay? Too many to count. And each one is like a little crystal, and each one is, is like its own little magnet. And if I have this magnet and this magnet, if I add these two arrows up, if I think of this as like the north end and the south end, the north end and the south end, if I add these two up, they kind of add up to zero. One points in one direction, one points in the other. It's like kind of like vectors add up to zero. If I have these two, they're pointing in opposite directions, add up to zero. Now these two opposite, you know, you add them all up and it adds up to zero, and that means that piece of metal is unmagnetized. That's really the only reason this piece of metal is unmagnetized, because its magnetic domains are randomly oriented. Now, this piece of metal, all the magnetic domains are oriented in the same direction. And that means that all those little magnets, you can think of them as all little magnets, you add them all up, you get one big magnet, and that piece of metal is magnetized. That's really the only difference between this piece of metal and this piece of metal. Unmagnetized, random magnetic domains magnetize, magnet, all the magnetic remains are pointing in the same direction, or generally pointing in the same direction. We call that a magnet. We color it like that. Red and green, red and blue, red and nothing sometimes you see them, but that's kind of noticeable as a magnet. Okay, that's really all there is to it, why one metal is magnetic and the other metal is not. Now, why don't these two things stick together? Now you should be able to answer that. Well, they're all, there's no force of attraction because they're not magnetized random magnetic domains. Now, if I take this one and these two, and I take the north 
and the south and put them like that, they stick together because their magnetic domains are all pointing the same direction. I have like one big magnet. Okay, there you go, I have two magnets. Now I can do the same thing with opposite ends or with like ends and then they repel each other. Okay, opposite ends attract, same ends repel, and we call that, those are magnets. Okay, we either have a fast force of attraction or a force of repulsion. Okay, now the most interesting thing is why when I take this piece of metal, which is a magnet, and this piece of metal, which is not a magnet, I put them together, then they stick together. Why is that? Well, the reason is this. If I take that magnet and I bring it close to that piece of metal, then what happens is that magnet can influence temporarily the magnetic domains in this piece of metal and kind of turn it into a magnet. It rearranges, reorients all of the magnetic domains and they all point in the same direction. And then this becomes a magnet temporarily. And you can see if I put this coin on here, the coin sticks to that magnet because it's stuck to that magnet. But if I take the coin away, if I take this magnet away, and the coin falls off because this is no longer magnetized. Okay, so then if I take, like I said, I have a magnet, we have a north end, it's kind of a temporary magnet, there's a force of attraction. But then if I take it away, then that force of attraction goes away because the magnetic domains go back to being randomly oriented. And I can do the same thing with the north end of the magnet. If I take the north end, I put it like that, then the north end will influence the magnetic domains in that piece of metal, and they'll all point in the same direction, and this becomes a magnet temporarily. But once again, if I remove that magnet, the coin falls away because all of those are now randomly oriented, and it goes back to being not a magnet. The force of attraction goes away. All right, that's really all there is to it. These two pieces of metal don't stick together because their magnetic domains are randomly oriented. These two pieces of metal stick together because their magnetic domains are oriented in the same direction. And this piece of metal, which is a magnet, can influence the magnetic domains in this piece of metal, which is not a magnet, to cause it to be a magnet temporarily. And I take it away and then it loses its magnetism. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.